Hi, thank you for joining us today. My name is Jack. I'm an engineer at Variato, and it will be my pleasure to take you through a demonstration of Variato 360 today. If you have any questions, please be sure to enter them into the questions box, and either one of my colleagues or I will answer them for you. We'll start off in the Variato 360 Control Center, and then we'll look at the dashboard shortly. Variato 360 relies on a set of servers, or services, that communicate with the database and clients. The Control Center Servers view allows you to check each server's location, credentials, communication port, and status. The Control Center service manages your client devices, recorder installations, and recording settings. The Data Vault receives recorded activity that is sent from the client recorders. The Primary Server manages the licenses for your clients. The Web Filtering Server filters client access to the Internet. The database server facilitates communication with the database. And finally, the 360 service manages Variato 360's web components and all internal communications. Now let's take a look at a recording profile. Variato 360's powerful recording capabilities capture and log detailed information on employee activity. Some of the activities that can be captured include website activity, instant messages, and email including attachments. Variato 360 is also able to capture the use of local, server-based, or online applications, all keystrokes typed, files that are uploaded or downloaded, and movement of files within or out of your network, including those sent to printers, removable devices, and cloud storage activity. For video playback of any activity, Variato 360 continuously takes full screen snapshots of each monitored computer, very much like a surveillance camera. The snapshots are taken at intervals that you define. They can also be taken based on actions or keywords as desired. You can then play back a detailed visual history of the user's activity from within the Variato 360 dashboard. In addition to recording employee activity, Variato 360 can also warn you of particular activities as they occur. You may define keywords and phrases that may be indicators of undesirable activities. When Variato 360 detects any of the defined keywords or phrases, it can optionally send an email notification and take screenshots at a more frequent interval, providing additional context around the suspicious activity. The Variato 360 recording profile also allows you to enforce an acceptable use policy by preventing users from accessing all or portions of the Internet. Variato 360 also allows centralized web filtering in addition to blocking at the local recorder. With local recorder blocking, you may block website access for computers that leave the network, block all internet access, block specific chat or instant messaging contacts, or block types of communication or even specific ports, for example. The Manage Computers screen in the Control Center is where you will manage all of the computers that you will be monitoring with Variato 360. From here, you can add and remove devices, group them, install recorders, and assign recording profiles and licenses, among other things. The Diagnostics tool is available to assist you in troubleshooting the installation of recorders or a recorder that has already been installed. These tests will verify if a computer will meet the necessary requirements to receive a remote recorder installation and make you aware of any point of error in the client recorder installation process. One thing the Diagnostics tool is not able to check, though, is the antivirus on your client computer. It is very important that you ensure that the antivirus exclusions are set appropriately before deploying a recorder. In most environments, you can deploy recorders remotely via the Control Center. You do this simply by right-clicking on a computer or a group of computers and selecting Install Recorder. Alternatively, if you would prefer to install recorders manually, or you would like to use a third-party solution for deploying your recorders, there is an option to create a manual setup file that you can run on your client computers to install the recorder. You may use the same manual installer to install a recorder on more than one computer. Variato 360 allows you to create groups to make management of your client computers more efficient. You may use whatever method you would like for the organization of your groups. Some of our customers create groups based on departments, and some based on location. However, you may use whatever organization method suits you best. 
You are able to apply recorder installation and uninstallation commands and assign recording profiles, recorder versions, and other settings conveniently to all computers within a group. The recorders maintain their own log file that you can, in most situations, access from within the control center. If you are troubleshooting any recorder issues, the client log file is most likely the first place you will want to look. To view the client log file, select the computer in the Manage Computers list, and then select the View menu, and then Recorder Log File, or you may select the View Log File link from the Task Navigation pane. The Database tab allows you to manage basic database functions such as backups and restores, data archives, logins, and so forth. You can create login accounts that grant users access to the data that has been recorded with Veriato 360. You are able to create accounts with specific permissions, allowing users to view only certain types of recorded data for specific other users. This allows you to create a role-based access and management structure for Veriato 360 within your organization. The Manage Database Jobs screen lists all of the database jobs that the Veriato Agent Service is responsible for running. These jobs include various SQL Server maintenance jobs, backup, archive, and restore jobs, and the jobs that process data that is received by the Data Vault from the recorders. All of these jobs are self-maintaining and require no special configuration on your part. There is no space management set up by default in Veriato 360. If you would like to set up automatic purging of old data or backups, you may do so in the Modify Space Management Settings screen. With Veriato 360, you can set up alerts that watch for specific conditions that you define based on a particular type of activity, such as website, email, or document tracking. For example, the Downloading Dangerous File Alert watches for file transfer activity for any download involving file names that include either .exe or .zip in the file name. You could further modify this alert, if you'd like, to specify a count of events, the domain or IP address involved in the transaction, or include additional file extensions. As you can see, there are many event alerts pre-configured for you, and you may customize these or create any of your own. Veriato 360 Recon gives you the ability to scan user activity for specific keywords or unusual behavior patterns. A few predefined alerts are provided for you as examples. If you would like to use them, you only need to provide recipient email addresses as well as SMTP connection information for your mail server. Anomaly detection, also known as outlier detection, identifies events that do not conform to an established pattern. These alerts take advantage of the data that is captured by the recorder and is used to establish patterns and automatically alert you to anomalous events as they occur. It helps you to predict and identify potential insider threats while maintaining user privacy. Veriato 360 Recon allows you to set up two different types of anomaly detection alerts, self-to-self -self and self-to-group. Self-to-self -self anomaly alerts will compare each user's behavior to their own past patterns. The user's pattern of behavior is created by applying a moving average to the numbers of specific recorded events, such as emails sent, files transferred to removable USB storage, etc. Then, standard deviations are calculated on that moving average to detect anomalies. The initial calibration can take up to 20 working days to complete before sending any alerts. Once this calibration is complete, anomalies will be detected. For self-to-group anomaly alerts, the pattern established as normal is based on the daily average for the group. The alert will either watch all users or each user in the groups that you select and will compare them to the group they belong to or to all users if they do not belong to a group. Let's walk through setting up a self-to-self -self anomaly alert. On the first screen of the wizard, we would need to choose whether we want this anomaly alert to apply to all of our users or only to users in specific groups. In this case, we'll just go ahead and select to apply this alert to all users. On the next page of the wizard, we would choose what types of events we would like to detect anomalies in. They're separated into two categories, documents and sent email. 
we're only able to select one of these categories so if we would like to detect anomalies in both we would simply set up a second alert. In the documents category we see that Veriato 360 Recon is able to detect changes in the number of files that a user touches, the sizes of the files that the user edits, renames, or moves, the number of documents or pages that a user prints, and the number of outbound transfers including FTP uploads, transfers to cloud storage, sent email attachments, and documents sent to removable or network drives. For the sent email category, Veriato 360 Recon is able to detect changes in the number of sent email messages, the number of attachments that the user sends, the number of blind carbon copies on the messages that the user sends, changes to the overall size of the sent email messages, and changes in the user's language patterns and sentiment. The Veriato 360 Recon documentation includes more information on what constitutes changes in language usage or user sentiment, but for example, it may be changes in the use of pronouns resulting in more self-focused or defensive language. This is just one example, of course, but like I said, the documentation contains more information. The next page of the Anomaly Alert Wizard allows us to adjust the sensitivity of the alert. When adjusting the sensitivity of our alert, it helps to understand what the different pieces of information in the example graphic represent. The graphic does not represent actual data from any user, but just a hypothetical depiction so that as you adjust the sensitivity, you're able to see how that change might affect the number of alerts that you will receive. In our graphic on the right, the orange line that moves through the middle represents the moving average that we spoke about earlier. The green line represents this hypothetical user's actual behavior. Some days it will be higher than the average, and other days it will be lower. The vertical black lines that have the hash marks across the top and bottom represent the alert threshold. This means that on any day that the user's activity falls above or below the vertical black line, or threshold, an alert will be sent. In this visualization, the red dots represent the alerts that would be sent for this user. As we adjust the slider bar for the alert threshold, making it less or more sensitive, you will see that the only real change we're making is to how tall those vertical black lines are. The taller they are, the fewer times the user's activity falls outside of their range, resulting in fewer alerts. The shorter they are, the more times the user's activity will fall outside of their range, thus resulting in more frequent alerts. On the action page of the wizard, we will specify two things. First, we will indicate who should receive the alert notifications when they're generated. You may select any of the alert operators that you have already defined, or you may define new ones right from here. Any number of alert operators may receive the alert notifications. Second, you will define the email rate. You may select to have each individual alert notification sent, or you may choose to have them sent only once per hour or once per day when the alert is triggered. Finally, on the last page of the wizard, a summary of the anomaly alerts configuration is presented to you for your review. You may directly jump to any of the previous tabs to make any necessary changes and then click done when you are finished. Now that we've covered the basics of the control center, let's take a look at the dashboard where you will review any data that you've collected with Veriato 360. The Veriato 360 dashboard allows you to browse, search for, and view activity recorded on computers in your organization. Keep an eye on productivity versus wasted time, and determine where breaches in security, compliance, or ethics may be occurring. The Quick View charts provide visual summaries from all recorded activity and targeted monitoring for security and compliance. Select a folder in the left navigation pane to display a panel of charts in the right pane. Veriato 360's dashboard installs with more than 100 predefined yet customizable charts. The charts reveal the most significant user, website, keyword, or other activity, as well as trends over time from the 10,000 foot overview. You can customize the charts, add new charts, and create new panels to meet your specific needs. Here, we have created a custom panel and a series of charts labeled Security Investigations. The charts in this panel are filtered to only look at Tara and Frank's data as they are the subjects of a high-profile investigation that may involve fraudulent and IP theft activities. 
We then built the charts that will look at the areas that we are concerned with, such as document tracking by device, which includes looking at cloud, network, and removable storage. Next, we want to look at any email threads going back and forth from these two users. In this particular panel, we created a stack chart to separate the sent versus received emails to assist with narrowing the focus. While this chart will look at top keywords detected based off of the keywords associated with this particular investigation. We start here with a document tracking chart. As you can see here, Terra has a good amount of cloud and removable storage activity taking place. Knowing what Terra's job entails, we could determine if this type of activity is warranted or not. Clicking on the removable section of the stack bar will then allow us to drill into the data set to see what files were being created on the removable storage. Here in the upper right is the summary pane. We can see that she had a total of 32 events. 32 of them she created. There were no edits, deletions, renames, or prints in this case. Below, we can see all of the events associated with the removable drive. Starting on the left, we can see the recorded date and time that the event occurred and the computer that she was logged into. The computer column is very important if the user has access to multiple machines, which may include logging into Terminal or Citrix servers. Veriato 360 will combine all of the user's recorded data from any machine they logged into under their username, so you don't have to search through computer data to view the user's activity. Remember, this would require an agent to be installed on any machine that the user is allowed to access. The next column shows us what application was used, the action, which could be create, rename, edit, delete, or print. Next is the document path, and the most important, the documents that were created on the removable media. Now we're going to review this activity by looking at what was displayed on her monitor at this point. The screenshots are like a CCTV camera allowing you to rewind, fast forward, and play back through the user's activity. We are going to retrace Tara's activity by clicking on the back button to see that she has navigated to the P drive that she has access to. Then inside the finance folder we can see that she is making a copy of the project Athena folder. Now we're going to click on the forward button to see what she does after making the copy. As we can see on the right window, she has the removable storage open and is pasting the Project Athena acquisition folder. Now we are going to play through the rest of the events as they occurred. Now we see where she ejected the USB drive and a bit further we notice in the chat dialog that we have some troubling keywords such as could cost us thousands, jail time, keep everything off the books, and suspicious. By the way, Veriato360 is recording both sides of this chat conversation. Now these are keywords of interest and are something that we would definitely want to export for our HR and legal team. But before doing so, let's progress further to see what else happens. Now we can see that they are advising each other to clear their Skype chat history a bit further and we can see them doing just that. However, Veriato360 has seen and recorded this conversation already. To export these snapshots for reporting purposes, we would first want to watermark the screen by clicking on the Show Info button. Notice now there is a red watermark located in the lower right of the current image we are looking at. Next, we would click on the Save button to save either the current image, all images, or we could save a selected range of images. Next, we would determine whether or not we wanted to save these images as either a JPEG or a bitmap to include in a third-party reporting or case management solution. Next, we also see that aside from the USB activity, Terra has a good amount of cloud storage activity. To see this activity, we're going to simply click on the bar in the chart. Notice that under the document name column, we see the same files that she copied to USB. Why is that? Well, they wanted to exfiltrate the same documents using multiple methods in case she got caught with the USB drive, and also to facilitate easy sharing with the outside financial investor. Note that if she also printed the documents as a third transport method, Veriato360 would see and record that activity too. So quickly we are able to determine what methods were used. Next, let's follow all of her emails. 
Just like with the other data, we see the recorded date and time, the computer she was logged into for this particular event, the program, which is Outlook, and attachments center received. Notice we can see that she received this email from Frank, which contains four attachments. We double click the number four and then the envelope to review what attachments were either sent or received. From here, we can see the legal documents that came from Frank, who had access to them. Next, we see the from name and all recipients that might have been included in this email, the subject line, if anyone was carbon copied or blind carbon copied. BCCs are actually used as another transport method to leak data or sensitive emails either to an outside person's webmail account or possibly to a competitor. And finally, we see the body of the email below. From here, we are going to highlight and copy Solace Energy that we see in the body of this email. Now I'm going to show you how the Veriato 360 search tool can be used to quickly find what you're looking for. The search is used when you don't know where to look. It's capable of querying data from any type of activity you select. For example, you could search for the word bomb in all online searches and keystrokes typed. The dashboard starts a search at the most current events in the database and searches all fields of all recordings. In the search for box, I'm going to paste Solace Energy that I copied from the email that Frank sent. Next, I'm going to select what areas I want to search in. I want to search within emails, but I don't want to search everything related to emails, so I'm just going to select email contents and attachment name. Next, I also want to search within chat contents, keystrokes, and finally, if there are any documents with the term Solace Energy in its name. Here is where I can narrow the scope of my search, including what users I want to focus on, and then I just click the search button. Once more, we see the event date and time, the computer, the user, the activity type, and where the keyword was found. We can see that it was found in document name, keystrokes, and email contents, attachment name, and chat contents. Remember, before we were seeing Tara's side of the chat. With the database, we tie all of this together. So next, we right click the chat. From this menu, we can go directly to the snapshots, the data explorer, or the user explorer. I'm going to select snapshots, and now we are looking at Frank's side of the chat that he was having with Tara. Now, I will click the play button to see what he was doing while chatting with Tara. We notice that he is sending the email with the four attachments we saw earlier. Now, we'll look at the Data Explorer and User Explorer tools. The Data Explorer module allows you to view and analyze data for any or all users by activity type. For example, to explore keystroke activity, double-click keystroke events in the right pane. When you are prompted to select criteria, you could search for the phrase Solace Energy. When you accept the criteria, matching keystroke events load into a separate events window with summary and details about each event where any user typed that phrase. Notice we see that Frank typed out Solace Energy. Next is the User Explorer, which is considered the spot investigation tool in Veriato 360. The User Explorer view allows you to explore and analyze all activity for any single user. Start your investigation by selecting a user from the All Users folder. The User Explorer allows you to drill in by activity type to find specific recorded events. In one events window, you have access to everything the Veriato 360 recorder has captured for this user based on the specified criteria. The Reports tool provides all the power of the QuickView charts in presentation format ready for printing and reviewing. Reports may also provide you with detailed event information as opposed to charts if that's what you prefer. The dashboard provides more than 80 predefined reports across every activity type. You'll find the reports in the provided report folders. Customize these reports or add new report folders and reports as you wish. You are able to schedule automatic delivery of reports by email, to a file folder, or a printer on a regular basis. Also, Veriato 360 has a simple API that is used to connect to the raw data stored in the database. This API could then be used in conjunction with many third-party reporting tools. 
Auto 360 also has what we call the export utility, which allows you to export selected data from your Auto 360 database instance and store it in specific file formats that can be accessed in environments that do not have access to your Auto 360 installation. Aside from the reporting, the API, and the export utility, Veriato 360 also includes an export service that is able to pipe Veriato 360's data into a SIEM solution. You may use the export service to add detailed Veriato 360 user activity data to a SIEM solution and gain a more complete view of all security variables on your network. The Veriato 360 export service allows you to automatically send selected types of event data from your Veriato 360 database to solutions such as Splunk, ArcSight, or Greylog. Another feature of Veriato 360 Recon is found in the management section of the dashboard, and that is behavioral groups. Behavioral groups are the result of analytic processing that identifies groups of employees based on their workplace behavior. These groups, which are independent of departments or other organizational groupings, provide a unique map highlighting productivity and unusual activity. Behavioral groups will begin to form as soon as Veriato 360 Recon is installed. They're dynamic and they can change from week to week. Once enabled, the Recon Recorder will return metadata about user activity back to the Veriato 360 server. There's an algorithm at the server that processes the metadata looking for similarities and differences in the activities and groups the users accordingly. The groups will appear as vertical bars on the behavioral groups chart. The height of the bar indicates the quantity of users contained within the group, while the bar colors illustrate membership coming from different Veriato 360 user groups or Active Directory departments. You can click on one of the bars to see the activities along with the users who formed it. Behavioral groups are important because you can, at a glance, see where activity is occurring and discover when users from the same department may be engaging in different activities. Behavioral groups can also highlight individuals who are acting outside of their expected role, which may be one indicator of insider threat activities. Also in the dashboards management section, you can perform various tasks such as creating groups of users, computers, domains, or programs. These groups can be used for managing data access for dashboard user logins, but also can be used for easily creating criteria to be used in quick view charts and reports. Rather than hunting through a long list of names to make individual selections, you can select a single group, such as marketing department, which includes all of the people in the marketing department. Or you could create a group of domains called business related domains, which includes websites that your users use to perform their job functions. You could exclude that group from charts depicting website activity and see which users are spending time on non-business related sites. That completes our demonstration of Veriato 360. If you have any questions, please be sure to enter them into the questions box and one of us will be happy to answer them for you. We do appreciate your time today. Thank you so much and I do hope you have a great rest of your week.